Hello, welcome back to DIY Astro. In today's tutorial, we're looking at Explore Scientific's Explore Stars software to control their PMC8 mounts. So the first thing you want to do is install it, which sounds straightforward, but there is actually a couple of quirks with that. So I'll put a link up in the cards for a tutorial on how to install it. And once you've done that, all you need to do is click on your internet connection. You should get something like PMC8 and some other letters and numbers after it come up and then just click on that to connect. So once that's connected, you can just click on your icon for Explore Stars. And this is the initial interface you get. So you've got this kind of like compass affair here. So you can actually just, if you want, once it's connected, you can just click on that center thing and you can drag it around. So going diagonally like that, you can see where we've got some numbers and that's the slewing speed. So It'll go all the way up to nine and down to one and back to zero. So if you're going diagonally, it's using both declination and right ascension, but you can just move on either declination or right ascension. The mount sounds rather musical as it's doing that. There's also another way of moving the mount, which is similar to your the, the hand controllers on most mounts. Um, so this is kind of like a a computer version so you've got your speed rates here so if I select speed 8 and then I can just move left right etc with these buttons here but I find it easier just to drag that around so before you do anything really you need to tell the program where your coordinates are etc and what mount you're using so if we go to this little drop down menu and go to settings preferences We've got all this information here so you can turn on GPS and sometimes it will automatically find your latitude and longitude for you it did when I first installed this program but when I uninstalled it and reinstalled it to do the demonstration of installing it um, I've had trouble with that so I've manually put in my latitude and longitude which I just got off the internet once you've got your latitude and longitude in there you also need to select which scope type you've got so i've got an exos 2 but on this drop down menu you can see that you can pick g11 uh, titan i think that is i exos 100 which is a smaller lightweight pmc8 mount and there's a couple of other options there which i don't actually recognize if i'm completely honest what that does it, it basically sets up the correct steps for the stepper motor and then you've got the directions here for right ascension and declination and the default is for the the northern hemisphere um, so if you're in the southern hemisphere you want to sort of click both those on just to reverse that so if, if, you, if you're living in somewhere like australia or new zealand or somewhere like that and you and it's going a bit haywire that's that's the reason really because it defaults for the northern hemisphere Anyway, so we've got a night mode here as well, and that's on at the moment. You can see it's all nice and red, so it's not going to affect your night vision or anything like that. But we can turn that off, and you can see absolutely nothing happens immediately. But if we click back, so we've got our initial interface, and then go to this app bar button there, and go to the H and then you can see it's turned everything white. I actually want it on the night mode, I think that's better. So we'll go back to settings, preferences. I'll stick night mode back on and then we'll just go through that once more. So app bar, return to main page and we're back in night mode now. So we've got some information here in these little boxes and you can actually, using the settings, you can actually add other things, but I won't go into that now. So yeah, the boxes. So this has got some time information. So it's got your universal time and it's got your sidereal time here. And you've got some OTA data in this box, which tells you where your OTA is pointing and some target data here as well. If you're actually um, going after a target, but we're not at the moment. So that's going to be just empty at the moment. What we can do now, if you click on app bar, it just brings up all these icons, which are quite handy. So we have got load extra stars in that one. 
I think there's a date the database for this is 70,000 plus objects um, that one's for a sky tour let me go off that now um, this one's for a sky tour so you can select objects for that yeah and then we've got the messy objects as you can see it's got lots of pictures so as well as reading it you can have a look see what they look like you can scroll along there's a number of them so that that can be helpful if you're trying to decide on a a target to look at or image and the same thing goes for solar system objects so it's got all the major objects and, and a number of the minor objects as well in here I don't really want to be on that sky tour thing how do I get off it oh, this has gone a bit mad load it up again right okay some it, it I think when I've reinstalled it it's gone a little bit glitchy so I may have to reinstall it a third time anyway we're back to where we need to be so what I'll do now is if I go to the app bar and we can talk about like the alignment routine so on the bottom here we've got like a two star alignment a three star alignment um, this buttons to sync once you've aligned on a star um, so if we do two star alignment just to give us an idea of how this whole thing kind of works so it will choose an alignment star for us oh yeah before we do that we need to be in the park position where has it gone hello oh maybe go on the app bar yep so I click on park and it's just going to go, you might be able to hear that whirling in the background, it's just going to park my mount to the the index positions which tends to be with your counterweight pointing down over the, the tripod leg pointing north if you're in the northern hemisphere and south if you're in the southern hemisphere I guess. So it's now in the park position. So hopefully from the park position it can get somewhere near the first star you go to, to to do your alignment so if we go to the app bar again pick two star alignment and it gives you a lot of information about the object as well as giving you like a little star map so when you slew it you can you can kind of know which star you're actually trying to align on because if you don't know the sky really well you can have to sort of open up a sky map or something to to work out which star you're actually trying to align on so this this is quite helpful if it's got a line to star, that means it's it's visible above the horizon and we can go for it. So let's click on that. So now my you might better hear my mount slowing and the flashing circle is where the the star that we're after is. And it's now going to go to where it thinks that is. But it's not gonna be actually accurately on there unless you're really lucky so what you need to do is use these arrow keys to move the object the star that you're trying to align on into the center of your finder scope and then in the center of your eyepiece and once it's in the center of your finder scope and eyepiece then you can click the sync button there should be another sync button up here so there so you can go sync and then it will pick another alignment star and if we're happy with that, we can go to that one and it will slow away to that second star. Okay, so it's it's the mount's now stopped where it thinks it needs to be, and again, what we do is we can either drag this around or use the arrow keys 
at a slow rate maybe, just to center the star we want in the finer scope and then in the eyepiece again. And then once we're done, we can hit sync and that should be the alignment done. And then after that, we can go to the app bar and just pick a object we wanna go and look at. So let me try and find something that's uh, compolar so it's not gonna set below the horizon. Um, M51 should be pretty good, yeah. And as we can see, it's got a lot of information about the object, and also it says Sluter object, which means it, it will be above the horizon. So if we click on that, it should slew to where M51 is, the Whirlpool Galaxy, which is my, my favorite galaxy. Okay, so at that point you can observe or image the Whirlpool Galaxy and hopefully it will track. Now, this triangle here, it's got a P in it and that means point. And the interesting thing about this software is it, if it's in point mode, it's constantly pointing at the coordinates where the Whirlpool Galaxy is or whatever object you're looking at is. It means that if you're not accurately polar aligned, then it will always be seeking on both RA and DEC to find the coordinates where, where the object is. So hopefully that will make the tracking a bit better if your polar alignment isn't 100%. Although because it's dynamic and it's not gonna be an arc rotating with on right ascension only, it you know you, you you run the chance of having things like field rotation if you're doing long exposures. I mean that's something I'll play about with when I'm actually doing this for real a bit more. But yeah, this is um, this is basically me playing with the software a lot over the last week and sort of then trying to relay that to you. But there may be more things I find out about it. So yeah, the point mode is quite interesting. It's almost like a weird kind of guiding. Um, but it's guiding based on the coordinates it knows it should be at as opposed to using a separate camera to lock onto a star. So that's quite unique, I feel. Um, but if we just bunk, bunk it off that a little bit, go to the left or right, it will go to TR, which is tracking. So now it's just tracking on the right ascension. So, yeah, I mean, it hasn't really like moved much. <laughs> so we can knock it off that quite easily if you just want to... Uh, track the sky conventionally. So yeah, that's quite interesting. Um, let me just see what else I can sort of show you guys really. Um, if we go to, oh yeah, on here, you can go to search and then you could just search for any object you want. So I put um, 31 in there. There you go, and it'll just give you like a list and we can just click on M31. So that's another way of going about finding objects in the database. Yeah, there, there are some things that I don't fully understand about this yet, but yeah, maybe there'll be an update video further down the line. I'm gonna start off by playing about with this, I think, and then if I like it, I'll probably stick with it, but if I find that I don't get on with it, then I'll, I'll probably shop around. But if you're interested in this mount and wanted to know about the software, that was kind of a quick look. Hope that, hopefully that was useful. If you did find it useful, consider giving me a like. If you're interested in astrophotography and astronomy and things like that consider subscribing because i really do all sorts of astronomy stuff it's quite broad but it's all astronomy um so yeah thanks for watching and take it easy clear skies and i'll catch you soon